Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Let's check the audio. Yep, cool. So, hello. Um, I'm here again. This is not going to be the breakboard drum programming tutorial. Sorry, I've just lost all will to even record that anymore. Again, there are like a million tutorials on that on YouTube. What this is going to be is this is going to be a tutorial specifically on the way I do side chaining in Renoise because I've seen some side chaining tutorials that basically get the gist right, but I don't see a lot of people do it the way I do it, and I think the way I do it is a lot more um, versatile and like you, it it opens up the possibility of side chaining a lot more things. Um, so we're gonna open up Renoise here. So here is Renoise. I don't know if you can see this window that I'm dragging around, but I'm gonna close that. Um, okay, so we have an empty project here. So I'm just gonna load up two samples. We'll load up a kick sample. Uh, 909 kick short and then a sample to side chain to. So let's try um, uh, crash. And 909 crash. And then so I'm going to have the 909 crash playing on this channel. And what I'm going to do is put a maximizer on it. So it's just squashed up all dynamics really loud. Oh, these samples are so automatically really going to change that. Um, now, the way that Renoise routes audio, it goes from left to right. That's just how it works. So um, when you're thinking of side chaining, whatever you want the other audio to be side chained to, like if you want your audio to be side chained to, to a kick, and you want to sidechain multiple things to the kick, you should have the kick uh, in the leftmost track slot. That, that's the best idea. So what you want to do is, um, I'm going to put in just a basic uh, four to the floor kick pattern here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whoops, seven, Sorry about any of the like, low-end vibration. I'm just using my uh, laptop's built-in microphone. So we've got this kick pattern here. So what I am going to do now is I'm going to insert a signal follower. So now we've got the signal follower receiving your signal you can see right here now I'm gonna insert this is the this is the one thing that I don't see a lot of people doing I'm gonna insert a Hydra and basically if you've never used Renoise before what a Hydra is is it's basically a way to do macros for any parameter of any device on any track so I've got this slider and basically I can set whatever track I want to go or I want it to go to and whatever device on that track I want it to go to and whatever parameter of that device I want it to go to and it'll control that and you can set the the minimum and maximum and the scaling envelope uh, the scaling curve of it and you can have up to nine of these because it's, it's the Hydra so I can actually well I can't because this thing's in the way but if you click this arrow it expands and there's even more outputs for this so what this allows you to do is I'm going to go to the signal follower here and select the Hydra and select input. So now if you look, when I play the kick, the, the slider on the Hydra is moving to the beat of the kick. So now I have this track over here, I'm going to put my crash down right here. So now to sidechain that, I go back to the kick track, go to the Hydra, select output 1, switch it from current track to track 1, or whatever track the uh, audio that you're trying to sidechain with is on. Uh, in that case, sorry, not track 1, not track 1, track 2. Um, select track 2, and on track 2, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a gainer, which is just a basic 
gain slider. It can go plus 12 or completely all the way down to negative infinity. Um, so I'm going to go back to my Hydra, assign that to the gainer, and assign it to the gain. Now when you first do this, it's going to assume you want the value to go up with the slider, so it's going to set the minimum to all the way down and the maximum to all the way up, so it's going to sound bad. Uh, it's going to sound like this. Just really bad, like, clipping and everything. Um, so what we're going to do is, what you want to do to sidechain is reverse these. So you want to set the minimum value to 0 dB, or whatever you want your, your maximum resting volume of the sidechain track to be. And then set the other one to negative infinity all the way down. So now, when I play the kick... But as you can hear, it's uh, because of the short length of my kick sample, the sidechain is more of like a pumping sidechain rather than like a rhythmic eight note sidechain. And to change that, you can either mess with the sensitivity and attack and release on the signal follower, uh, as well as the scaling uh, curve on that. Or you can mess with the scaling curve on the Hydra for that output. So I'm gonna try that. Still not where I want it, so let me try messing with the sensitivity. Now keep in mind, uh, the reason I don't like messing with this too much is because this ends up affecting all of the audio that you're sidechained to. That's why I like messing with the scaling curves over here. Just a, a fair warning, because if you've got a bunch of different tracks sidechained to the kick, then uh, that can cause some problems with like how you want how uh, fast you want the sidechain to release on other tracks versus that one. So yeah, that's basically how I do side chaining in uh, in Reno. Is uh, it's it's a thing that I don't see a lot of people doing with with using Hydra instead of just going directly from the signal follower to the gainer. Because I see a lot of people add like a million different signal followers into their device list, which is fine, um, but it just always seemed super like unnecessary when I could just have two devices and have this one device side chaining a million different things at once you know so yeah that is it for this tutorial thank you for watching goodbye